All right, if you are somebody like me that has been battling passivity and you wanna be more assertive without sounding like a jerk, then watch this video to the end because I'm gonna give you three ways that you can speak more assertively and be more confident without being a jerk about it. Now, typically, if you are passive and you wanna ask somebody something, it sounds something like this. Hey, would you please consider the possibility of maybe doing this for me when you have a chance? there's a pretty high probability it's not gonna get them. In fact, your niceness is actually frustrating to others. People just don't know when to take you seriously and when not to. Does he really want me to do this? So usually we don't wanna tell somebody to do something in a question form, but I'm gonna give you two ways that are statements and the last one is a question because sometimes you just can't help but be nice. These aren't hard, they're actually pretty obvious, but they don't work if you don't put them into practice. Number one, I would like you to blank by blank Thanks very much. If you are used to being passive, this may feel a little uncomfortable, but there's nothing jerk facey about it. It's actually very kind and respectful, but also direct. It's a simple way of clearly communicating what it is you'd like to have happen and by when. So of course, this is easier if you are a boss or a supervisor, or if you're talking to your kids, you know, we could say something like, hey, little Johnny, I would like you to clean your room by five o'clock today. Thank you. I don't know if you call your kid little Johnny. Or maybe something like, hey Gertrude, I really need you to get that project done and on my desk by five o'clock today. Thanks very much. There's no reason why Gertrude would be offended by that phrase. And probably the most important part of this phrase is the thank you at the end. You're showing gratitude in advance for what you're asking them to do. Now we'll have a small exception here for the asking part because sometimes you are an equivalent with somebody. And so in this case, you do have to have a little more flexibility. It can sound something like this. Hey, Barbara, this project needs to get in by five today. Can I count on you to get your part done? Thanks very much. So yeah, I guess that is a question, but it's very clear and direct. And then it leaves a little room for adjustment in Barbara's schedule. All right, so number two is kind of stepping it up for you passive people. It can feel a little bit uncomfortable, but phrasing it this way will keep it respectful and direct. And again, it's extremely simple. This is for that time that you have a disagreement with somebody. It could be major, but it could also just be for minor disagreements. And it sounds like this. I respect your view, but I disagree because. And of course, following that because needs to be a good explanation, not some kind of personal attack. Hey, I respect your view, but I disagree because you're an idiot. That's, that's not gonna work. And your part in this is to actually respect their view and not just give lip service. If they're a friend or a relative or a colleague, yeah, you should respect their view. You don't have to agree with it. But part B to this as well is that you don't need to prove anything to them. If you have a good convincing argument and you wanna present it, great. But in most cases, we don't need to prove our opinion. We can just agree to disagree. And as simple as that sounds, I know from battling passivity, it's a difficult place to be in. But just start to put it into practice because really these are respectful words to people. And the passive side to this is actually detrimental to you. You may end up harboring bitterness against this person. You may just hang your head in shame, or you might just say, fine, and walk away, in which case you're still gonna be bitter. Take the opportunity to voice your perspective. Your voice deserves to get heard just as much as anybody else's. It's important to remember too that being assertive doesn't mean non-confrontational. It may be uncomfortable, but it does equal being truthful and honest with the goal of resolution. I gotta add as well that sometimes passive people are sensitive as well, but it's really important to not let your feelings either towards the person or the topic dictate what it is you're saying. So obviously we never wanna say, you just make me feel whatever, because you're the one in control of your feelings, not them. So the last one is sort of our passive assertive hybrid for those of you who are just kind of getting warmed up to being more assertive. It's sort of a combination of number one, but with a question in it as well. And it starts off with a compliment. We think of either something good that the person has done in the past or some good quality about them and give them that compliment. Thank you so much for all your hard work. And so it goes, compliment, ask, compliment. Thank you so much for your hard work on that last project. Will you get this to me by Friday at five? You're the best. So yes, we are asking them a question to which they could say no to, but the killing them with kindness usually wins people over. I'm not sure what this big project is we keep talking about. I know these are extremely basic and simple, and maybe you knew them already, but they only work if you put them into practice. So be a man or woman of confidence. Speak truth and honesty in love and respect towards others. If you got some other tips or phrases that have worked for you, put them down in the comments so others can learn from them. And if you wanna know more about the four communication styles, especially assertiveness, watch this next video. 
Ew! <laughs>